Posey woke up with his entire face buried in the sands. Where was he? How had he come here? After shaking off the initial moments of confusion, he began to apply what he remembered from his scout training at school. After a few hours of exploration, he realized he was on an island and started looking for a shelter before nightfall, following a night spent amidst the bushes, as the rumbling in his stomach increased, he began searching for fruits in the trees. The red apples, seemingly within arm's reach, kept moving farther away, as if playing a game with him. Unable to reach the apples, he heard laughter and giggles. Who's there? Hey! Is someone there? he exclaimed. However, there was no response. When the sun reached its zenith, his thirst became unbearable. Posey was thrilled when he found the river in the middle of the forest. At least now he had water to drink. However, as he filled his palms with water and brought it to his mouth, the water in his palms seemed to turn into mud. No matter how many times he tried, the result was the same. And the annoying laughter again, this time closer. Hey! How does water turn into mud? Where is this place? He asked. Still, there was no sound. He couldn't satisfy his hunger. Exhausted from thirst and heat, his energy was dwindling rapidly. He had left his body in the shade of the first tree he found. As he gazed at the sea, on the verge of drowning in despair and tears, what did he see? A huge ship. And it was very close. Shouting and waving incessantly, he desperately called out to the ship. I'm here. Help me. Hey, look. I'm here. Despite his continuous struggles and leaps, he realized that no one saw him. Had he become invisible? He couldn't bear all of these events anymore and began to cry helplessly. When his tears mixed with the soil, he heard that terrifying laughter once again. Enough already. Is this some kind of joke? Linda, our beautiful fairy, who had been watching all of this with great patience, could no longer stand by and watch what the wicked witches had done to Posey. Unable to show themselves directly to humans, as it was one of the strictest rules of the fairy kingdom, Linda decided to help Posey without being seen. Posey needed to satisfy his hunger first. From the top of the tree under which he was lying, Linda dropped three or four apples onto Posey's head. Seeing that his energy had somewhat returned, Linda, the kind-hearted fairy, thought about how to rescue him from the island and tried to provide Posey with a clean water source that the witches couldn't reach. Meanwhile, the fairy queen Nasty. To safely transport our little friend to the mainland where humans lived, murmured magical words and created a magical boat. This magical boat would be able to control itself and adjust the helm's control to the dominance of the sail. Now the only problem was how to get him here without being seen by Posey. The wise queen came up with the idea of starting a small fire. A small fire, consisting of harmful weeds in their forests, would attract Posey's attention with the smoke, and he would see the boat she had just created. However, the wicked witches used all their magical powers to prevent this by making it rain. In this situation, with the fear that Posey would not be able to see the fire created by the fairy queen Nasty and would have to take refuge somewhere, they would be nourished. Both sides had to display their ongoing struggle with their ordinary powers for our little friend now. On one side were fairies striving for the well-being and happiness of every creature in nature, and on the other side were witches harming plants nourished by the fears of all animals. The battle on the clouds lasted for hours. As usual, goodness prevailed. Our kind-hearted fairies, after this victory, were able to attract Posey's attention and lead him towards the location of the boat. When the boat he boarded with joy and excitement began to move on its own, he realized that none of this was real, that he had only had a bad dream. As he docked, he waved to the police on the shore. He had already started crying from happiness. As soon as he stepped onto the pier, he hugged the first person in front of him. Child, where did you come from? How did you get here? Are you Posey Monka, who has been missing for two days? Posey nodded tearfully, as if confirming with his head. How did you get here? Where were you? When he turned around to show the boat that brought him to the shore, Posey saw that it wasn't there, 